Another very effective method of biasing the transistor, which also provides negative feedback to stabilize the bias from variations in I sub D, is accomplished by connecting a large resistance between the drain and the gate. Because current into the gate, current going into the gate of the transistor is zero, there will be no voltage drop across this resistor. Thus, the gate voltage will be the same as the drain voltage, or VGS will equal VDS. Now, VDS, the voltage here at this point relative to the source, VDS is simply equal to the source voltage, or the, um, the power supply voltage, minus the drop across the resistor R sub D. So VDS is going to be equal to VDD minus I sub D times R sub D. And again, VGS is equal to that. So we have VGS is equal to VDD minus I sub D R sub D. As we had in the previous example of biasing, where we were setting the gate voltage using the voltage divider, we had the situation where the gate voltage and the drain current act in opposite directions. As I sub D gets bigger, VGS gets smaller. As I sub D gets smaller, VGS gets larger. Now looking again at the, the uh, equation describing the drain and gate relationships, or the, or the current in the drain and relate. <laughs> Let me just write it. I sub D is equal to 1 half K sub N prime W over L times VGS minus V t quantity squared. This equation, which relates VGS to I sub d, then these two together demonstrate that feedback nature, the negative feedback associated with or provided by this resistor. Again, as I sub d gets bigger, VGS gets smaller. A smaller VGS here corresponds to a smaller I sub D, which is just exactly the opposite of what we had just, uh, just described. So bigger I sub D, smaller VGS. Smaller VGS feeds back to give us a smaller I sub D. And similarly, if I sub D gets bigger, smaller VG, or if I sub D gets smaller, then bigger VGS, bigger VGS leads to I sub D. So once again, we've got that negative feedback that stabilizes this, this bias um, against variations in I sub D.